Well, now I want to turn to uh, Mr. Dennis Brennan, who is going to talk about art, and he's going to talk about photography. He's probably one of the best photographers model railroaders have right now. So, Dennis, welcome. Well, thank you, Jim. Um, uh, I'm glad to be here, and uh, hopefully I can um, shed a little light on what it is that I do and what other people can do. I'm not sure where I left off last week, but um, let's let's talk about this picture. Um, this is a scene from the Sandy Harbor Railroad, and um, okay, so what makes this work, and what really makes this work? What makes this scene sing? Oops is the fact that um, we have beautiful reflections and that's not an accident. In a lot of model railroad photos, you see water, but you don't see the reflections. And in my opinion, it's the reflections that make the water. I mean, that's what makes it look so real. Now, what did I use for water? Shower door glass. Shower door glass, um, I used it for a couple of reasons. One reason is that this was a pretty big space. It was over four feet altogether. You're not seeing that much of it here. Um, I think in, in, from one end to the other, it was almost about six feet so I had to use a large sheet of glass that I ordered specifically um, from a glass company and they cut it to my specifications and the way it worked is I just painted the underside of it with a flat camo green paint so that when you look down into it, you see, um, you see dark green, like, cause it's supposed to be in a Harbor on the backside of the city. And that looks just like New York harbors. If you peer down into it. Um, uh, and it, it's that simple. I did nothing else. And the deep reflections come about because the glass itself is about a quarter of an inch thick. Um, so think about <laughs> how many layers you have to pour of, of uh, anything else that you would use to get depth like that. And also, um, you can clean it with Windex. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> There's the, you don't have to worry about scratching it when it gets dusty. You just clean it with Windex. And the other thing is, too, if you were doing, uh, going to pour something this big, um, you would actually have to cover it somehow so that you wouldn't get dust falling on that surface. Um, at, at any rate, photographically speaking, to get those reflections, um, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. So you have to find that sweet spot in positioning the camera so that you get the perfect reflection. And that's, that's just a simple matter of looking through the viewfinder. Now, what you see in the reflections is going to be everything that's behind it. So you're seeing, or you're seeing like the, you're seeing the uh, box car and, the, and the, the green part of the bridge. You're also seeing the, um, the, um, pilings and um, where it's white in the reflection, that is where actually the sky would be above those buildings. So everything you see is reflected, is what's reflected around it. So, um, and, and because of the shadow areas under the bridge, it, it, it <laughs> the glass is rippled. But because of the shadow areas under the, the bridges, it looks like the water is smoother back there. And that's just an optical illusion. 
um, it's still ripple, but it's just, and that just adds a little bit more to it because it looks like the water um, has ripples only in a few areas. And you wouldn't think that was possible with, with uh, evenly rippled shower door glass. And the other thing I discovered about it too, is that um, I was afraid that things would look like they were sitting on top of the glass and not in the water. And as you can see, you can't tell. You really can't tell. It does not look like anything is sitting on top of the glass and it actually is. And that's a simple little optical trick that I use. You'll notice that um, it's realistically dark along the bottom where the water line is. Everywhere it's dark. Well, <laughs> if you have dark, and you have a reflection, that dark and the reflection of the dark hides the fact that something is sitting on the scene. So at any rate, that's, that's how I came up with that particular uh, picture and that angle. Um, again, we have a diagonal line going across, which draws your eye into it. You've got a line that's pulling you in under the bridge and then you've got this varied background. So all of this adds to the composition and it adds to the art in the photo. Now, this is, uh, everybody has seen this shot before. Well, a lot of you have. Um, the art behind it is, is interesting. Um, the art in the photography, that sky is nothing more than a seamless backdrop paper um, that was white. It's photographic backdrop paper that you shoot people on or whatever. Um, I strung it across my uh, studio, hung it and coved the corner because this was an L-shaped layout. And then the layout was positioned about three feet from the backdrop. And I used various colors of blue light. Well, actually it was light with blue gels on it. And I use various intensities of light through those blue gels to create the slightly different color in the sky. And that makes it look real. The other thing is the camera angle again. Once again, we've got a very realistic camera angle that, 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 um, that looks as if you're standing right there. Uh, the, and, and, the, the subject matter, um, is the, all of this adds to it, the subject matter um, is just an ordinary scene. There's nothing spectacular about this. It's as if the photographer just happened to be in the right place at the right time and just grabbed that shot. The bus is, is, is leaving the scene. Uh, the engine is crossing the bridge and it just worked out very well. And the little details, I mean, as good as the photograph is itself, I mean, the, the technique with the light and the shadow, that's the other thing. The light looks like strong sunlight. And um, a lot of times you're told, I mean, a lot of <laughs> uh, photographic lure says, ah, you shouldn't use, you shouldn't create shadows, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you can use shadows. <laughs> but you have to do it correctly. Um, and that's what makes the scene come alive. It gives you a time of day. It gives you a sense of, of weather. Um, uh, and so, and as technically good as that fo this photo is, it wouldn't be um, any better than the modeling that's there. And the modeling, comes from little simple understated details like the schmutz the difference between the where the pavement ends and this kind of gravel road goes up to we don't know where in this picture it doesn't matter um, it's probably an employee road that goes up to a building uh, somewhere on the railroad would be my guess if I was just looking at it and didn't know um, and then you see all this little schmutz along the, the thing. That's nothing more than um, some ashes. Uh, 
And then there's a little sewer grate. And we've got a little bit of exhaust going up the bus. And um, the, the bus being in that position is no accident. That is a nice, it gives a nice little um, pop of color to balance out everything else. Um, and so uh, your eye may be initially drawn to that, but then you look and you see the various houses up behind here and you come around and you notice the engine and then you'll see the Denny loves Sandy on the bridge. And then you see another little thing here where the person who wrote that um, probably decided um, uh, that that was too far because in order to, to get Denny loves Sandy, he was reaching out from and holding on to the railing while he wrote that. So at any rate, that's, that's part of what makes that photo work as well as it does. Um, Dennis, let me ask you a question, if you don't mind. Not at go, all. Go back to that photo. Oops. All right. Let me see if I can get back there. Oh, that's, hold on. I got to go the other way. Oops. I just lost my show. Hold on. Sorry. No, I'm sorry I asked the question. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It's, it's, uh, it's here. I can... I can get it back. Just minimize that window. Just minimize that window. There you go. All right. Now I just got to click through it. Oh. There. This one? That one right there. Okay. All right. So I'm standing there with my uh, cell phone in my hand and I want to take a picture. Okay. What, what, how, how, what went through your mind? Why did you decide to hold the camera in the position that you held it to in to, to be able to achieve that photo? Because looking at the photo and hear you talking about all of everything you see, I understand that. But when, when you walked up to the layout with camera in hand, and looked through the viewer and saw that, what made you think at that point, I want that picture? Well, <laughs> that's a great question. Um, first of all, I've seen that kind of a photo in my head. Okay, I'm a very, obviously, I'm a very visual person and I can see things ahead of time. So I visualized something like that. I designed this scene. Um, it was only one place where I could have the street dip under the bridge. And so um, when I, after I designed that scene, uh, I knew I wanted to take a picture of the train going over the bridge. And so when I walked up to it, that's where I positioned the, bu the bus. I first, I just rough in a camera angle first. I set my camera where I think it should be. And then I tweak things. Now to get the angle, I wanted it to appear as if uh, I happened to be standing there as a, as a miniature person. I had to be standing somewhere back there and I moved in with the camera. So, um, uh, and then it's just a matter of balancing everything out. And I'm not sure exactly how to explain that. Um, uh, I, I will, I, I'm actually pretty good when I, when I pick a spot, because uh, I can visualize it in my brain. And so I'll just set up my tripod and set the camera. And then I'll, you know, I'll move the tripod in and out, or I'll, I'll, I usually know what focal length I want to use. So it's a matter of, um, like say I want a normal lens shot. It's a matter of then putting the camera on the tripod, moving it back until I get the framing exactly how I want. I'm not sure if I actually answered your question, but- And in addition to moving your tripod and all of that, what you actually do is you put the truck exactly where you want it. You put the, the diesel exactly where you want the engine. 
If the boxcar is not there, you go get a boxcar and you put it there. In effect, you are creating the scene that you're going to photograph and then you're taking a photograph of it. Exactly. That's exactly it. Gotcha. So I will set, typically, like when I go on a shoot for classic toy trains, um, any of the pictures that, that appear in that article are completely set up by me. I bring the train over, I position the cars, I'll position figures, I'll position a person, um, I'll remove something with permission, of course, that's in my way, that, that might be in the foreground. And, um, uh, and then I, I, I also will then light it and then tweak things so that you'll notice like in this shot where the bus is, it, that's no accident where that bus is and where I put the light. It's, it's, it's the light fell exactly where I wanted it to. And I moved it around until I got it exactly where I wanted it. So that, that, you know, I didn't want to see too much of the bus yet. I didn't want the whole bus to go in shadow. So it was just, a, just enough. If it was out any further, it would have detracted from the scene. So from a non-photographer standpoint, which that's me, what you're really telling me is I need to create the scene to where when I'm seeing it with my eye, I say to myself, yeah, that's got the detail that I want. That's the picture I want. Then I go to locate my camera to, to take a picture of that scene and make sure that I've got any shading or anything like that involved, right? Exactly. That's okay. exactly right. Exactly. There's more, right. more to this than I thought. Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, um, it, it's not as simple as it looks. Uh, if, if you're trying to create a photo like this, now don't get me wrong, it doesn't mean that it, and I don't want it to sound like you have to understand every single aspect of this. I've developed this over years of work, okay? Um, so it wasn't always this easy. I've always had a good head for composition, but I've done this so much now that I kind of just know where to put things and I know where to put my camera. Um, yeah. But, but I don't want anybody to feel discouraged. I happen to be a professional, but it's not that. Anybody can, can kind of get a sense of things that work. And the best way to do it, the best way to do it, if you've got a cell phone or you got a camera, because everything's digital now, you're not wasting any time or money. You might, waste, you might spend a little time, but you're not wasting money Take a picture, put your camera, set your stuff up, put the camera where you think it needs to be. Don't worry about lighting at this point. Just put the camera where it needs to be, where you think it should be, and take a picture and then look at it and then pick it apart. Usually people have an innate feeling when something doesn't look right. You know when it looks good, but you don't know often, <laughs> oftentimes, um, you don't know why it's not working. So if you take a picture and it just doesn't feel right, then keep playing around until it does. That's the best thing I can say. And you just take picture after picture. The more pictures you take, the better you're going to get at it. Thank you. You're welcome. And uh, I've got two minutes and 58 seconds left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry I took up so much time, but I, you know. That's all right. That's all right. Um, I want to move on a little bit here. Uh, this is another shot. Um, what's, what's so cool about this shot? Well, there's a lot of depth. This loading dock pulls you right into the scene, and then you got this overhead crane. Um, and again, all these little details. Um, the loading dock is a, is actually, uh, one of my kits that, um, 
that is based on an actual loading dock that used to be here right in town. And it was abandoned. And I went and took pictures of it, dug around underneath and um, uh, found, uh, revealed what, how it was actually supported. And I made this thing exactly, it's an exact scale model. The only difference is I shortened it just a tiny bit. Otherwise, it's, it's, it's scale lumber and everything. This overhead crane is a Bachman Plasticville um, signal bridge that I kitbashed using HO girders on top. And I scratch built the little um, housing for the motor that holds the, the that raises and lowers the chain. Um, uh, and then I put some HO scale rail rails up there that would move this, that could move this back and forth. You can move this back and forth on. And, um, and then of course we have a figure here and a figure here. This guy is just standing there like a lot of supervisors do and just kind of, <laughs> just kind of letting somebody else do all the work. Um, <laughs> and again, we have some street schmutz is what I call. And um, we have the engine back here, and this just kind of pulls you right into the shot. And you'll notice again, there's a shadow. The light is coming from the upper right. Um, uh, okay, so it looks like, um, oh, I still got a few minutes left, don't I? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, uh, so that's enough for that one. Let's go and move on. Here's another shot from, now this is a different angle from that same area that we saw the engine and the bus going under the bridge. Completely different angle. Now, the way I, oops, didn't mean to do that. Okay, um, the way I positioned the camera on this one, the idea was that over on the close side of the bridge, um, there was another area similar to what you see over here. And that's where the photographer was standing with his camera. So you have a photographer's point of view. I'm not shooting at a lower angle. I'm not shooting at a higher angle. I'm just, that's just my, my line of sight. And um, again, I used, you'll notice this is a vertical shot too. Um, uh, and that, that gives a whole different feel to this and I used a longer lens. I don't know what end of the lens it was exactly what the millimeters were, but you can see that it feels a little bit compressed. I used a, more of a telephoto end of the lens shot on this to get that. Okay, here is a shot that I took on a customer's um, layout. And this was also featured in classic toy trains. Um, Again, I used backdrop paper across the background here. And that was a real pain because this was a long, long place to try to lay. Um, but the idea is that you get pulled into the shot. Now, the one, little, um, the one little critique I have about this one is I wish I had the truck back a little bit further. It just, it's, 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 too far into the shot. It's okay, but I think it would have been better had I pulled it back for, further. Um, mm -hmm. um, but that's, you know, that's just me. <laughs> and, and so again, this is, this shot, I think what makes this work is because we're looking, again, it's a, it's a person's view, kind of a, a, a regular view that somebody might have if they were standing there and we're shooting under something. Um, it's actually under a, a bridge that has a railroad, um, a, a high level line on it. And that actually gives you a nice frame for the picture. It really frames the shot. And the road again, pulls you in and the truck pulls you into the shot. And the, the color of the blue truck against the red, against the, the uh, the buildings in the background and against this is no accident. That's everything was positioned exactly where where uh, where I wanted it. Except after looking at the shot for so long, I decided I rather would have had it back here for the truck. But 
anyway, that's where that is. Okay, this shot. Now this one is a little bit different than I take, usually take, but uh, this was another layout that I shot for classic toy trains. And I just, I liked the way it looked compositionally. And I wanted to show that we were really up there looking down. And so the photographer in this case, he might've been standing on that bridge top. It's probably not very realistic, but I think it works. It works for me anyway. And, the, and um, uh, the, there's a lot of, again, why did I use a blue caboose and a red? There's red here, there's blue here, there's blue here, and there's red here. And we have yellow in the middle. All these colors kind of balance out one another. So, so you know, it, it's, it's just a matter of playing with color. I'm playing with color, I'm playing with angle, I'm playing with lens selection. Now, this is an overview shot of the Sandy Harbor Railroad. Um, now, this shot, because we have so many tall buildings around here, this shot could have been taken right from the back porch of another structure that you're not seeing. The photographer was holding that camera um, and taking a shot. And really what he was trying to shoot was the, the train. But of course, he was a little bit late. And so he couldn't get the engine. He's just getting the train going through the photo. The train is not the important thing in this shot. And that's the other thing that you need to think about. The train does not have to be the hero in every shot. What we want to do is create something that feels right. And the, 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 the one thing that's common about all of these photos is that they feel right. There's nothing that seems out of place. There's nothing that draws your attention more than anything else. Part of, uh, I think, what I try to do is not make heroes. Occasionally there will be, but I, I try, to, try to make a scene that just feels kind of normal. And in this case, um, we have a typical city scene and there's a lot of depth to it. And yet it's not that far from the foreground to the background. What we're looking at is about 12 feet maybe 15 feet from the foreground here to where these buildings are. Now, part of what makes all of this work is these buildings up here are HO buildings. These buildings down here are all O scale. And now the HO buildings are all kit bashed. They were all Walther's kits that I kit bashed into bigger structures because if I used them the size that they would normally be, it wouldn't work. But by kit bashing them into something bigger, um, uh, it, it fits in nicely and you still get that same sense of, of perspective. And no matter where you look and how you walk, you could walk around this layout, it didn't matter even though this building here and this building roof that you see here, these were real close to those buildings. And even with them being that close, you didn't notice the difference. And that's because I chose window sizes in the HO buildings that were big. Now you can see if you look at the window here compared to the window in the O scale model here, it's, it's pretty much the same size or maybe even a little bit bigger. And that was the key to me when I was doing this was to find windows that were big enough on these buildings so that it would kind of match up because nobody knows how big a window is supposed to be. But if it doesn't scream out, now like if you see this little tiny windows here, if I put that over on this side of the picture, it wouldn't have worked. And that's what I played with a long time moving buildings around, trying to figure out how to make this work. Um, and you'll also notice that the skyline is not even at all. I mean, we have all of these things sticking up 
um, interrupting the skyline. There's all these angles, all these little buildings, all these little, that all adds to it. And you can also tell that there's a color palette that I'm using here. They're all pretty much earth tones. Nothing, nothing pops out anywhere. And that's, that is not, not an accident. Okay, here is another shot that I took on a customer's layout. And the, and the thing is, this is a reverse kind of um, uh, force perspective. This um, cart in the foreground was actually out of scale, way bigger than the, than the car. Uh, and then the building back here is HO. Um, so you can go the opposite way in a photograph, it might look weird on the layout, but in a photograph, you can make it work the opposite way. Um, uh, and so, and you'll also notice that another hallmark of what I do is that I try to keep everything in focus that's critical. An out of focus foreground does not work in photography for model railroads, as far as I'm concerned. The minute it's out of focus, then it says model, 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 model. Because in real life, you wouldn't see that typically. So if you have to make a decision about what to keep in focus, set it so that you, you keep your foreground sharp. And if you can't keep it sharp, then move the camera or change your lens angle, change something. The background can go soft like this, that's fine. But the foreground in your object should be as, as sharp as you can get it. That helps, that helps. Now, sometimes I can violate that rule if the foreground is very plain, like if you're shooting and there's a street and it's flat and there's not a lot of detail in it, it can be out of focus and you won't notice it. But, um, uh, if you have an out of focus telephone pole or a sign in the foreground, you've killed the shot. Well, it's beautiful photography, no question about it. Listen, I, I'd hate to cut you off again, but uh, I got to move along here. Okay, that's fine. It's at 16 minutes. So, so yep. there we go. Um, thank you very much. If anybody has any questions, I'm glad to answer them. We do have a comment from one of our YouTube viewers saying that they wish they could pick your brain about kit bashing. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know what? Maybe I'll do a, um, uh, maybe we can do a, a whole thing on kit bashing. We I can do that. that. We can do that. Yeah, we I have a lot that. of good ideas about how to approach it. So, yes, we can do that. Sounds good. All right. Well, thank you, Jim. And thank you for uh, uh, thanks for everybody who's paying attention to my uh, diatribe. <laughs> I know about everybody else, but extremely informative for me because I had no idea about the work that you were doing about moving everything around before you even took the picture. So thank you Sarah, so much for explaining that. You're welcome.